This tutorial is part two of data validation using custom formulas in Google Sheets. If you missed the first tutorial, there's a link in the description below. So let's move on. In our last tutorial, we looked at using regular expression match to help us create uh, data validation for our cells. In this tutorial, we're going to use a couple other Google Sheets function types to create our data validation custom functions. So let's have a look. What if we wanted something greater than today's date? Well, that might be okay for today, but what about tomorrow when tomorrow becomes today or the following day when that day becomes today? It changes dynamically, right? So we can't actually go back and use our date rules. We have to create a custom formula for it. So we've got today's date. So for me, that's the 23rd of January, 2021. And if I put in uh, greater than today's date, so that doesn't include today, if I typed in uh, the 23rd of Jan uh, 21, it's going to come up with an error. What if I put in the 24th Jan 21? That seems perfectly fine. Okay, and another quick example, if I go the 3rd of December 2022, it's going to be perfectly fine as well. So how did we go about this? Let's have a quick look at the data validation rule. So we can right click, scroll to the bottom, hit data validation, and we see that we've chosen criteria, customer formula is, and we've got B6, which is this cell here, is greater than today. And we've rejected the input and shown validation help. So let's click save and have a look over here at the formula to make it a bit easier for you to see. So we've got B6 is greater than today. So what's today do? Let me show you an example. Have a look down the bottom here. So if I go equals and EODAY and close the brackets, we can see we've got the current date. And each day that will change dynamically as you open up the Google Sheet or it will change on its own after a few minutes as well. So let's delete that. Cool. That makes sense and that's a really useful tool for your data validation. Moving on, date must be a weekday from Monday to Friday. Hmm, how are we going to handle that one? First, let's give it a little bit of a test. So today is Saturday for me. So if I put in today's date, which is the 23rd of Jan 2021, it'll say the date must be a weekday, not Saturday or Sunday, bad me. Okay. So what if we choose tomorrow? We know what the answer is. It's a Sunday. We go 24, 01, 21. We've got an error. Cool. What about Monday, 25th, 25th, Jan, 21? Aha, success. And so on and so forth. So what are we doing here? You can check out data validation, but you already know how to do that. And it's probably easier for you to see on the side here. So what we're using here is a number of functions. The first one that we're using is weekday. So weekday returns a list of numbers from a date value between 1 and 7, where Sunday is 1 and Saturday is 7. So for example, if we do today, which is Saturday, we can use our, if we type in equals weekday, and then we'll go brackets 23rd of 1st, 2021, close brackets, we will get 7, okay? And that'll, that will appear as a number. And of course, if it equals 7, we don't want it to be displayed. So what we're saying here is the weekday is not equal to 7. So that, that date, that is the weekday, is not equal to 7, okay? And you can see these two little greater than and less than symbols that make arrows pointing away from each other. In Google Sheets, that means not equal to. So we've got this one here inside this and bracket, cool. And then we've got a comma. And then we've got the weekday, again, for the cell B7, also can't equal one, which is Sunday. We've wrapped these two weekday rules that they must not equal into an and statement, which says that, okay, if the weekday equals seven, or if it equals one, then we're going to come up with a warning because it shouldn't. All right, moving on. Now, what if we want no more than 15 characters in our string of text? So this might uh, help your wordy writers in your cells if they're doing a report in a sheet or something. If I type in, for example, this is cool, 
it'll be perfectly fine because I have here, let's go up and have a look up at the formula bar up the top left here. This one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen characters. If I say this is cool, isn't it? Question mark. We're going to get an error because it says no more than ten characters. Okay, so how did we achieve this? Actually, it's quite simple. So let's have a look. So here in our data validation, imagine that's down here in our data validation, you can see the formula. We have uh, the length of all the characters in cell B8 is less than or equal to 15 characters. If you're starting to get some flashbacks from your junior high school, or elementary school years, you're in good company. This less than or equal is exactly the same as what you might have been used to. So length of B8 is less than or equal to 15 characters. Simple as that. Cool. So let's keep this in mind and make this a little bit more complicated. What if we wanted to add a specific phone number to our list? Let's have a look here in cell B9. Must be a phone number with the length of 10 characters. Cool. Okay, so let's have a look here. If I go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, what happens? Seems to be working fine. Cool. What if I go uh, 0, 1? Ah, we've got an error. Must contain a number of characters and no spaces. What if we go... A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. Here we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 characters. Well, that fulfills part of the rule. Let's see what happens. Must be a number containing 10 characters. So it doesn't fulfill the number rule. All right, so what's going on in the background? Let's have a look. So we've added this to our data validation rule. Again, we've got this AND Google Sheets function here, which means we're going to incorporate more than one argument. And both arguments must appear within the data validation rule. So our first one is just like this one above. First, we want the length of B9 to be equal to 10. So very strict here, instead of greater than or equal to 15, which is when we want it to be exactly equal to 10. And next, we've got a combination of our regex match and a not symbol. And then also in the middle here, we've got to text. Okay, there's a lot going on here, so let's start from the inside and go out. So what does to text do? To text just makes certain that this is going to be a text character instead of a number. It's just a double check. Okay, and um, so if I put in a number here, if I go um, 10, and you'll see it's moved over to the right-hand side that this is indeed a number. If I type in type to prove it, then this one and close the brackets it says one which means it's a number okay if we go to text we remember that was one before if we go to text for this one equals to underscore text and select this close the brackets and now if we go type and select this cell we've now got two which means it's a text item in the cell all right we don't need that anymore let's delete cool so we're just double checking that this is uh, converted to text. Even if it already is, it's no big deal. Now our B9 item, it, as a text, it, we want to look inside to make sure it's a number. So let's click on here. We might zoom in a little so you can see. That's better. Okay, so what's going on in our regular expression rule? So here we've got a backslash and a capital D. So a capital D means not a digit. A small d means a digit. Capital D, not a digit. So anything that isn't a digit, for example, a, a letter or you know, a question mark or, or something like that inside the string. Saying, okay, if I see something that isn't a digit or a number, I'm going to say true. Okay, then we've got this little pipe thing in here. Now, if you remember from the previous tutorial, the pipe means or. So something that isn't a number, or we want to check if there are any spaces. And we can do this with the backslash little s meta character here. Okay, and when we wrap those up, it will say, okay, well, if I find a letter here, it's going to say, oh, true. And, or if it finds a space, it'll say true. And we kind of don't want that. We want the opposite, don't we? So what we need to do is wrap the regular expression match function inside a not function to get the the opposite reading. So when it says true, we want it to say false. And 
than this length, we also want it to say false to come up with our warning. So then we combine the, the length of 10 and our regex match to make sure everything is a number in an AND function, and that's our function. Cool. Moving on to our last one. Let's zoom back out again a bit. There we go. Okay. Our last one is we want to show a whole number between 1 and 20. Now, if you've been playing along and you went through the numbers tutorial, you would have remembered me saying that if we use a number range using the number data validation, it will also accept decimal places, as you can see in this example. Now, what if you strictly just want whole numbers, so numbers without any decimal place? Let's go back to our custom formulas. All right, let's give it a test. Uh, we've got whole numbers between 1 and 20. Let's say 4. That should meet the criteria, and it does. Okay, what about 20, our max range? Okay, that's perfectly acceptable. What about 21? No, it comes up with an error. Now, remember what I said before. What about decimal numbers? Um, what about 2.5? No, it must be a whole number between 1 and 20. What about 13.2? Uh, nope. What about 13? Success. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. To make it easier for you to understand, I've put each of the items in their own row to make it a little bit clearer. Let's zoom in a bit so we can have a look at this more clearly. Again, we've wrapped four different arguments inside an AND statement to make sure that each one of these must be included in our argument. First, we need to ensure that it is a number. So if this is a number, it passes. Next, we want to say we've got our regex statement here and we're saying to text. We convert it to text because regular expression matches require a text item instead of a number item. And what we're asking is that does, does the string of text, which is our number, contain a decimal point? If it does, it will say true. So we swap that round to be false. So it states that we don't want to see any decimal points in our string. Next, we want to say that B10 must be greater than zero. So remember, the whole number must be between one, including one, and 20, including 20. Finally, we say B10 must be less than 21, so inside the 20 range. And that's it. Let's zoom back out again. Okay, so that's all there is for custom formulas with data validation in Google Sheets. I hope it's inspired you to create your own dynamic custom formulas. In the next tutorial, we'll look at checkboxes. See you then.